document your work and show your work, right? If you work for someone, there's someone who you report to, right? There's someone who reports to them, correct? And there's someone who ultimately all the way up to the top. Show your work. Back in the day, I'm going to get to you in one second. When I was still overseeing operations, doing Tanisha's job, which is a very difficult job. She's over there. I asked for daily reports. She probably still get them to this day. In that daily report, you know who, who, who was always, who I could always tell, or who was the most engaged? How? You can just see it in a report. Not even the length. Because you don't, you know, that, that's tricky sometimes. Pause. But it's, it's more about the content and context of what they're saying to you and why, right? And based on what they're doing, what they're asking from you. Does that make sense? Because if you're if you're doing your if you're doing what it is your role is, right? We're going to find each other anyway. Because nothing's perfect. And as I'm stumbling down, you're going to stumble up. And eventually, and I'm making it up, right? Because you're not in retail. But say you're in retail. Eventually, you and Tanisha are going to be going like this. You want to know why? Because y'all going to be talking about the same things all the time. And y'all going to be coming to him or me. And then we're going to be talking about the same things. And when you consistently do that, you know what she's going to be eventually saying? We might as well just bring Mia over because she truly gets... When you show your work, you don't have to ask. You're showing your work. Show your work. Answer your question? Because then it's, then it's not subjective anymore. It's not, well, they don't like me. He's dark skin, I'm light skin. I'm short, he's tall, right? And, and don't get me wrong. Me and you both know some of that is in there, right? But when you make it so objective that someone has to see your work, it makes it very easy for somebody to stand up and fight for you. Does that make sense? I ignored you four times. You need one of these? Okay, go for it. I'm going to say what he said, and I'll say it again. Say your name. Okay. Say your name. Okay. Your name is your name. If it don't mean nothing, and it has no value, it's because you have to work to build the value into it. Does that make sense? Can the world, listen, we can have a conversation another day about education and equality. We can have an, a conversation another day about lack of opportunities. We can have all those conversations and we have those conversations and they're all very real, right? But the basic one-on-one of this thing is, what are my circumstances today, right? And how do I get out of my current circumstances? Does that make sense? You ask me how I got completely out the mud? Is because when I was in the mud, I was laying there thinking like, no, nah, I was laying in the mud thinking like, I see that twig. I wonder how strong it is. Like if I get that twig, that person keep walking past right there, I'm gonna see if I can get that twig and sell it to him, right? 
you, you got to think about got to think about where you are and how to get out of your current circumstances. That's on us. Right. The, 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 the government ain't about to give us a, a, a like, yo, I want reparations like everybody else want reparations. I'm, I'm listen, my my normal my normal self is talking about everything that we would do that we deserve that ain't go nowhere right but the thing that i need for us can y'all say y'all name i mean loud that if there's a level of personal accountability from 40 million of us everything gets a lot easier the circumstances change what they can do to us changes right how they have to account for us changes. Does that make sense? When all 40, say our name. If all 40 million move like that, things get interesting. Does that make sense? When you go in and you sell your time and you're so good at it, and they say, you know what? Shh, bro, I need you to do X, Y, Z. Yo, what do you need? Keisha, she ain't here. Keisha, at some point, got a job offer. Somebody else. Said match it, it don't matter. Does it make sense? Her name is her name. Her value is her value. Kamaya's building a name. Where her name is her name and her value is her value. Does that make sense? Once you built that, ain't no, ain't no question about it. Do we make mistakes? Yes, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes like everybody else. But if there's intentionality in building value in your name, right? Your employer has nothing over you. You have the market, you have your name. Uh, 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 um, if someone leaves us, I'm usually saying, what's the opportunity for them, right? And hope and, and being thankful for them getting a better opportunity, right? It's always, you gotta always look at what it is is this best for the individual and the person in the overall community. As humans, as whatever billion on earth, right? I talk about the 40 million because that's us. But this all gets better if everybody on earth start to think about this the same way. We ain't talking about half the stuff we talking about. Does that make sense? Now I'm, I ignore like five or six questions, so let's get them out. Very well said. I'll echo what he says by saying, I was in a, I was in a gym today trying to, trying to get my 25 pounds off. And the young one was in the gym and he was struggling. And the trainer was at him and, you know, you could tell he really didn't want to be there. The trainer was screaming at him. And I walked over to the young and said, I didn't know the young one. And was like, bro, do you really want to? Somebody making you be here? And he was like, no. 
to skip the rest of the story, the most important relationship you have is with yourself. If you, if you can't convince you that you need to do everything that he said, then you already lost. Like, yo, if you don't have a personal plan for yourself, right? Each of us have to have, I got the James Whitner plan. I told you I was laying in the mud a bunch of times. Time, what? Whatever time. And to his point, there's someone who started in this business 20 years from me, 20 years ago with me, and they was probably at a cash register. And to his point, 20 years later, they may have progressed this much, right? And I see them, you know what they be like? You heard them stories before, like, man, I remember when, remember when we was, man, I remember when we used to be right here with, you know what I'm saying? And that's a dope story. We get to reminisce, he or she goes this way, and I go that way. The difference is with, what's your name again? The difference is what Mal said. It's simply about having a plan for your brand, right? And your brand is your name, right? Say your names again. Say your names again. Say your names again. And that's the power of when everybody's working with it together, right? And we get to see it. We get to see it when we get to see it when we when we march. We got sick when, when they when they killed George Floyd. We got tired. Everybody was sick. Like man. Get this, we get into it, we're gonna get in the streets. I'm gonna say something we hate. We watch people tear down the Capitol. We sat there and watched it like those people got together. Say y'all name. Say y'all name again. Those people said we're gonna go tear up the Capitol. Right? Disgusting, most disgusting thing that you could ever do. Right? Like, yo, togetherness for good or for bad, right, is togetherness. The thing that I used to hate now as an adult is growing up, and even they do it now, I hate when they call youngins gangs. I hate it. It has such a negative connotation, right? For me, when I came up with somebody and you came from around my way, you was around my, you, you was like my brother or my sister. And if we was around people who wasn't family, I took care of you. And you took care of me, right? If five people do something good, are they a gang? No. So when five people do something bad, oh, we got to be a gang. I just felt like saying now. It just bothered me. Um, but no, I, my point and purpose for the whole conversation is just a subtle reminder. I think that like with everything that's happening in the world right now, that don't nobody owe us nothing. And we got a responsibility first to ourselves, second to our families, third to our community, right? And if we do that, everything else gets easier. But you can't ignore number one. And sometimes we skip one, two, and three and just worry about the streets, which is the ground, Twitter, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the streets. Like, yo, you skipping, you skipping the work you supposed to do. You skipping the work you supposed to put in. You skipping paying attention to your brand so you can look like you got a brand for the gram, right? Or you can do the least amount of work possible to get the most money possible to look good for the streets. When, say our names again? Yeah. Louder. Yeah. We are the streets. It's us. We dictate how this goes. We dictate how this moves, right? I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm not saying don't be in the streets because if y'all catch me out drunk, I ain't trying to hear it. What I am saying is don't forget the priorities. One, two, and three. And when you sell yours like I sell mine, make sure the person buying it always feel like they got a deal because then you're going to always get more. Does that make sense? Anybody around me is going to come out as a winner. Everybody. I'm going to give you way more than you give me because you're going to feel like walking away from me that you got a deal. So next time you need something, guess who you calling? That's value. Any more questions? That's free game, everybody. Oh, go for it.
So it's funny because I didn't have this thinking as a senior in high school. I got it in college. In college is where I figured out like high school was like high school for me. And, and, and A, I'm very impressed by your conversation as a senior in high school. I thought you was much older than a senior in high school. So yes, 100 percent and not on look, purely on conversation. So that's dope. Second, um, I felt like going to college was like, if I'm gonna make it out, it's gonna be right now. And I was right. College for me wasn't about, I went to know, I went to Edinburgh. I am about to call my college nowhere university. I went to EUP, Edinburgh for life. Ooh, 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 ooh. But Edinburgh is a small Pennsylvania, it's a small school in Pennsylvania. It ain't gonna come up on no top 100 list. It ain't gonna come up on no best place to get. It ain't coming up on none of that. But I got a solid four year education because you know what I learned at Edinburgh? My minutes matter. I got 4.0, not because I was the smartest dude in the business department, it's because I just went over my notes more than everybody else. When everybody else was drinking, I had my notes in the party with me because I figured if I could think about that in the middle of the party, then I could think about it in the middle of the test when I was stressing. And that's when I started to figure it out. I learned intentionality in college. So there's only one piece of advice I can give you. Well, it's a couple. First is manage your time. Two, you're going to have, you're going to meet some of the most important people in your life in college. Uh, one of the people to this day is on my will and trust is people from college. When I was incarcerated and I broke a gazillion laws with people who I came up with. Like, yo, the people who rode with me, the people I was in college with. Like, a lot of those people that I went to college with are my friends to this day. So enjoy the four-year experience, manage your time, and be super intentional about how you spend your time. And it's where you built your brand. If you, if you talk to people who went to college with me, they would all say, I knew it. They're they, they going to tell you the stories that, yo, he was the only person in the, hey, pause, pause. So I'm, it was my party. I was throwing it, bought the liquor, invited everybody in the party. Everybody's having a blast. Every couple minutes, I run through my notes. Boom, back to the party. Run through my notes. Back to the party. Because I knew tomorrow, if I make this choice, I'm going to have to go pay for it with the test. And if, if that success or failure on them tests, to me, equated to I never wanted a job. I don't know if I said that out loud before. I probably have. I never wanted a job. Like the idea of a job was like, and pardon to anybody who works a job. Never wanted one. And the reason I say it is when you understand the value of your time and how you can get to it, I was willing to invest minds to hustle. So that meant I was okay making nothing. Does that make sense? And the cost for me to live costs nothing. That's why people talk about getting out the mud. I lived in, yo, I lived in Andover Woods when I got here. Y'all probably don't even know Andover. Andover Woods is down on, that's down off of South Boulevard. My rent was $400. I had an air mattress that ain't had no air in it. Back to your point. But those are the three, those are the three, those are the, those are the three things you need to be successful in college. But my, my point of going over to Andover Woods and the entrepreneur point is, I was comfortable having nothing to have something. That doesn't mean, I also, there's, there's a lot of the story before that, right? I had rental properties that would pay my rent, so having nothing wasn't technically having nothing. I still lived in privilege, kinda, but the investment's different. Different question, I was about to go off on a rant. Uh, any more questions? Because I was ending free game, but we ain't going to end it. Let's answer the questions. Go.
thousand percent. Listen, some people don't like me because I make them work. Some people don't like us for a bias against us. I'm okay with you not liking us because we're going to force you to work. Because as he said, I got one boss. You know what my boss is? No, the work, the output. Because if I'm not producing, right, that's hold, me holding me accountable. If I'm not producing, then we can't do nothing. Does that make sense? So the work is the boss. Does that make sense? So again, I started off by saying earlier when I was just getting my mind into the conversation. Man, I plan minds. All of them. All of my minutes, all of my times. When I got feelings, I sit around and think about how I feel about my feelings and what I want to do about them. Does that make sense? I got friends who call me to talk about how they feel about their feelings. So I can think about their feelings and how that might leverage my feelings. Real rap. That's what happens, like he said. The air gets thin when you're at the top. And we're going to all go to dinner. Our team is going to dinner after this. And if you came and you a guest, come to dinner with us. But the thing, the thing you're going to learn is if we go to dinner and we all eat 800 pounds of food, we're going to all end up being 800 pounds, right? Whatever we do together, we going to, that's what you're going to get. You are who you hang around. You are who you spend your time with. So you are, you are your communities. Everybody say their name. Yeah. Say your name. Yeah. Say your name. Yeah. With this level, if there's, there's 50 people, 60 people in this room, if we walked around this time, say your name. Yeah. This 60 people just say your name. If we walked into this room and got a multiplier of people and we can do that like that every time, that's power. Right? So does intentionality matter? Man, it's our everything. It's, does preparation matter? It's my everything. I'm thinking about what you need from me before you know what you need from me. I need to know what it is you do, why, what you care about and how and how we affect that. Because when you better, guess what you are? Better for me. So I can't help you. I can't help me. I can't get you to help me until I know you good. Because then once you good, it's a better shot at me getting mine. Is that a flawed way of thinking? Yes. But guess what? I'm a black man in the United States of America. And it's the only thing that works for now. Does that make sense? Are some things going to change? Absolutely. Are we going to do the work? Absolutely. But how we got to move forward now is we got to own ours. Does that mean I got to work three, four times as hard? Yes. Does that mean OJ needs to work harder than me because she's a black woman? Absolutely. Why kid ourselves? Right? That's truth. Right? Know it. Own it. And to your point, yo, my counterparts may have more resources than me. So they might have got there faster. But over the long haul, <laughs> I'm betting on us. Because slowly but surely, I'm going to work. He going to work. She going to work. She going to work. He going to work. And it's about building a culture of, say your name. Say your name. Say your name. When you show up, you just come to show up and say your name. And he said it when I asked him, is that what you see around? He said, no. Nah. Thank you, by the way. Like, yo, if you come with the energy of saying, I don't see that. Because that ain't what I stand for. That's not who I am. And that's not who I'm around. That's leadership. And I applaud it. Because when you got that attitude and approach, say your name. Say your name. Like, yo, that's the thing that that's the thing that I don't too much get pressed up on cool. I'm a cuss right now. I'm the coolest motherfucker I know. So I'm not looking for validation from nobody. I wake up with that. God bless me with some height, chocolate skin. You know what I'm saying? I can move around the world. All right. You know what I'm saying? I'm good with that. Right? I get to own who's around me and why. And I'm going to use his words again. 
I asked the man, is that what you see? You said what? No, nah, that's not what I see. Me and the people around, this around me, got good energy. We look at the world this way, right? Nothing controls that. We control our environment. Say your names. Say your names. Say your names. We control that. Right? OJ needs something. Say your names. Lito needs something. Say your name. George needs something. Say your name. That's community. That's us all doing the individual work. So when we know we need something, you can stand on it. Yes, how communities of people built wealth? Whole nother conversation. Say your name. Say your name. What happens if social status was going public? Say your name. Everybody wins. Right? And when we lose, say your name. Say your name. Say your name. We learned. Make sense? Any more questions that I missed? <laughs> There's so many number ones. I, I would I would have to have more context on the brand. So give me a little bit. Um, you um, you have everything pretty much set, like your um, uh, distributors, like. Um, funding and everything like that you just looking to i guess market or something like that like brand marketing what would you say that would be like a number one why, why does the world need you the thing that i've learned is the most important thing in business is people understanding why the world needs you does that make sense yeah and continuing to evolve your why okay and there's a consumption why um, the city began to love Flavor Factory and social status because we engaged with them in a meaningful way and we provided distinction. That was a why. The evolution of the why was the engagement, right? The distinction still lives. This all started happen, happening when Kev said, like, yo, we need the engagement back. And we all missed it. Like, yo, I get so much joy out of these conversations and learning, right? Um, that I think the most important thing in this setting, in the world going forward, if I was a new entrepreneur investing dollars, and we're looking for strong whys. Okay. Um, to go on top of that, what was your why for wanting to start social status, a mom and year? What were, what were some things that... My first why is I just, I just wanted to get out the mud to prove to myself that I wasn't supposed to be there. And once I got out the mud, I wanted to prove that everybody, that nobody's supposed to be there. And in between time, it's all the other things. Like, it's, it's different because money's important to be able to take care of yourself. And Psychology and Money is such an important book. I, they didn't pay me for it to keep saying the book. It's just really good. It's a really good book. Um, it's easy for me to say because I have, I have a bit of privilege now, right? We've built a company that's meaningful. And for the most part, I stress, but I'm not worried about where my next meal is coming from, right? And I think once you get to a point, and if you're younger, you might know this. Like when I was younger, I used to check my bank account every day. Sometimes like 20 times a day, like. Like something was about to change, <laughs> right? And even before I went out, I was always constantly calculating what was in it and why, right? But some, at some point, you get to a point where you ain't checking it no more. You know what? You, you know when your paycheck come in and you add it all up and you start paying your bills and you know they're going to come out, but you're still looking to make sure it don't get over. You got like kind of like PTSD for money. When I got past financial PTSD, if I'm, if I'm saying the initials right, it got easier for me because then I never really cared. It was me, this is oversharing. We're in a shallow industry. 
So I was just in the industry, moving around, hiding, right? Trying not to scare people because my problem is I shrink myself. My humility makes me have to make me smaller so I don't get in your way and you don't feel like you a threat so we can move faster. That's something I got to deal with though. Does that make sense? But for me, as a black man, this 6'4", and dark-skinned and dark-complected and boisterous, right? I can be quite intimidating. Does that make sense? And that level of intimidation don't always go well when you're moving around in some of the rooms that I got to move around in to push our business forward. Does that make sense? So once I got hyper-connected to what it was that really drove me and got honest with myself about it. And, 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 it, it, and honestly, it wasn't about me. It was because people start trying to tear down people that were around me and it had helped me. So I was never fighting for myself. What happened is somebody picked the fight, just picked the fight with somebody that I cared about and it set me off. And when it set me off, I ain't stopped being set off since. Does that make sense? Because you start to realize I fight good and I know it always have, right? I understand tactically and, and I got stamina. I'm good. I can go, I can go round for round for round for round. I'm built for this, right? So I understand for me, one of my strengths is my discipline. I know I got it. I know it's one of my superpowers when it comes to being locked in. So I just leverage it. Does that make sense? And I try to use it for the good of everybody else to bring people along to create space that people can operate in. Does that make sense? Yeah. There was other questions. Let me go back to the minute, come back. Go ahead. Um, so like, just from my perspective, from like the past couple of years, you've seen uh, a sudden emergence in corporations, uh, typically sneaker corporations working with uh, black creatives, whether it's uh, you, Joe Freshka, Salehi Bimbri, um, even with like Nike doing a yard running campaign and working with HBCUs as yep. far as releasing dunks. How do you feel as though black creatives can leverage um, the infrastructure of big corporate to advance certain things within their own community? You witnessing it. But I mean, th this is, this is, this is first and foremost, I think some people were in on it well before George Floyd and the great white awakening, right? Um, there are, go back, let's, let's so, we're, so, we, so we're honest. Civil rights don't happen without white people, right? Like, yo, it's way more white people than there are black people. And white folks ain't just start being woke. Does that make sense? Now, is there some Messed up white folks on the other side. My, my, favorite, my favorite analogy is 70 million people voted for Donald Trump for one reason or another, right? Luckily, a little, a few more voted for the other guy. And I ain't talking about politics. I'm talking about the demonization of uh, all things diverse did Donald Trump stood for. Does that make sense? I'm not talking about all the other stuff, right? So to your point, I think that Joe's doing an incredible job. Joe's been talented. He needed the opportunity. I don't think the timing of, it takes 18 months to make product. When did the first Joe Fresh Goods shoe drop? Let's time it. Was, it. was it before George Floyd or after? It was before George Floyd, right? I can say... Our first project, we've done projects way before. Uh, we actually done the Air Force One before and all the other projects were in a pipe. But what I will say is there's definitely a push from all, all people, all brand, our industry, to make sure that there's equity amongst our community. Does everyone believe in it? 
But does it happen? Yes. Does that make sense? But the thing that we both know is we've been carrying, we've been carrying a baton. It's just now that I think you're seeing people get more comfortable. Pause. I'm going to say something to you different. And I say it all the time in meetings. And I shouldn't say it. There's been, I'm not going to point, I was about to say a company's name. I'm not going to say a company's name. There have been plenty of white companies that's leveraged big corporations to build their brand. And y'all can fill in all the blanks of all those companies, right? So it's only fair that black companies get that same 20-year, 30-year runway that our white counterparts have gotten 20 years, 30 years before us. So is, is there an, an acknowledgement that what happened in the past happened? Absolutely. Is there an investment in uh, talent? Absolutely. The reason why we're talking about entitlement, honestly, real rap, is there are way more opportunities developing than y'all could possibly imagine. Say y'all name. Say y'all name. We can't leverage the opportunities if y'all aren't individually prepared and we're not collectively prepared. This is an incredibly difficult time to be black. It's also one of the best times to be black. And I said it that way is because I don't want you to ever believe that it's going to get easier, right? But right now, there's a ton of opportunities. To his point, you set me up for these beautiful answers. I appreciate you. I mean, you know, it couldn't be a, it couldn't be a time this better to leverage your skill set and grow your brand if you built your name. Thank you for that question. Somebody else had a question, and if not, I'm coming back. All right, I'm back. My question is, how did you come up with the Amma Manir name and why? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> excuse me. I don't got COVID. Um, I know that's what y'all was thinking. I, 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 he, he went. <laughs> um, so it's interesting because Amma Manir was the one where I got a chip on my shoulder. I think y'all know that by now, right? Amma Minier was the biggest chip because they laughed at Flavor Factory. It was like, who's this? Right? Who it ass do, right? And then it was social status. And it was like, oh, that's kind of dope, right? And then I was like, I got one for y'all. The idea of Amma Minier was taking ownership of luxury, but it's always been ours. That makes sense. So it was about taking ownership of a space and getting credibility in the space. So I knew I wanted something French because the infatuation with luxury fashion, right? And I wanted something that sound good, but meant something. Eileen. So I called one of my French homies. <laughs> and I said that to him. And he started to say words to me. And, and I started to Google stuff. And then I Googled, either I Googled or he told me. And he said, man, year. And then it was, or I said, man, year. And then he said, put Ama in front of it. It means my way. And then I said, oh, my God, I think I got it. And then that's when Cav had his agency. That's how this is how me and Cav hooked up. Cav had his agency and I called Cav and his cousin John and Mark uh, Dean. They are the agency. And um, we got the logo. And after I seen a name and a logo and I was like, that's it. And then the rest was just built up, built, built to go to make this conversation, the rest was the same. The rest was taking the energy and the intentionality that went into the idea and building a name for it. And everything that we do today 
it's not about, that's when you say it's about me. Shit ain't about me. Sorry, I cussed again. This ain't about me. It's about, say your name. Say your name. It's about having a collective voice that's so powerful that it means something. That's the Whitaker group. That's APB. That's Ama Minier. That's Jade. That's the things that we're building. Them things got to live past me. If those things, if, if I die and those things stop meaning something, I fail. Does that make sense? Those things have to live and create a legacy. All the work that y'all individually do in y'all lives have to live and create a legacy. In everybody's family, there's somebody that people talk about. Like that person was, or this person was. Be that person. Does that make sense? Any more questions? I'm not saying any more. We got any online? I just forgot about them all day. Someone had a question about, um, can you speak on what is perceived work and what is actually work? Um, they feel like it takes more than what people like say that per to get successful. What is perceived work and what is actual work? Yes. I mean, the perception of work, well, here, one, one is about idealism, I think, and one is about actually realizing the work, right? Because in today's culture, you can sell an idea and get rich off of it before you, and you ain't done nothing. You can get evaluation on nothingness. And I don't know if this is where they're going, right? And I don't think it's where it's going, but I'll say it anyway. And the other part is, I think, I think what they're saying is, because they're saying success isn't as easy as it looks. One thing you will be hard pressed to hear me say, and y'all won't believe me or not, is that we're successful. I simply don't say it. We're still working in building. People ask me how we doing. I say like, yo, I got opportunity and ability. That's all I could ask for. Does that make sense? And I think it goes into the question is because it's a constant. I'm stressed out every day because y'all may not believe it, but you know what I had to do today? Prove ourselves again. Tomorrow we got to do it again. Tomorrow we got to do it again. Tomorrow we got to do it again. So that's why I said, I didn't say outworked, outworking. I was working when I, before I got here. I'll be working when I leave. Like, yo, there is, there is some work-life balance. We could talk about that later. And there is kids and there is family and there's all the other things that matter. But when you talk about building value, like, yo, you're, you're, you're never actually there until it's over, right? And it's not over until you're out and going to the next thing. I don't know if that's where they wanted me to go, but that's where I went. Go ahead. I think, I think that can really be boiled down to uh, social media, where social media, uh, the good thing about social media is the um, ability to connect to people. You know, I always say, like, um, it used to be where if you wanted to you know, do business with somebody in Los Angeles, you either call them or fly to Los Angeles versus now you can just boom, boom, send a DM, right? Yep. But the negative behind that is the idea of, you know, the false perception of what success looks like. I think that nowadays, um, especially, I know for me, um, you see people who are your age who, you know, got the nice crib, got a car, but no, but that could be their dad crib and they could got that off of Toro. You know, so the idea of perceived work versus actual work is, you know, and, and I'm sure you can attest to this, the most successful people don't care about perception. And what it looks like versus, as he said, what the numbers look like actually on paper, like what's the facts behind it. And so um, I think the idea of success is that, you know, don't care about what the perception is until what is said becomes facts and not uh, opinion based type of thing. So, yeah, no, very well said. And I'll echo that and go to you in a second. I'll echo that and simply say. Uh, the only thing that's real is your investment into yourself. Everything else is perception. Everything else is like, yo, I tell people all the time. I just said it today. 
please miss me with words and show me action. I speak, say your name. Say your names. Like, yo, the action is way more important than the words. Y'all saying y'all names, but there's impact to that, right? Yo, like, yo, the impact of, of the work and the, and the togetherness and, and building your brand, that's, that's real. The, the, the filter on the DM, the, 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 the dude who driving his daddy's car, the girl who doing the, what's the leg stand y'all do? With the one, with the other one behind that make every girl look curvy. I'm sorry. I picked on the dudes with their dad's car. Y'all know the stand. I, I ain't gonna do the stand, but y'all know that y'all talking about the one. Okay, okay, yeah, that, that, that one, the little an the angles, right? Listen, it, listen, I get it. That, that's a part of marketing and branding and having, and having good self, whatever the word is that comes after it. But how you actualize that, right, is the key. Does that make sense? You had a question. You got any more online? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to get you in one second. We got any more online? I'm going to come back to online. Let me answer real fast. Go ahead. <laughs> No, and well said. I believe everybody should dream and dream big. And I think, I think wherever we are right now is because I honestly, this is going to sound like a Kobe quote. I don't know what limitations look like. I learned that in prison. Like, yo, y'all got, if y'all could keep people in here indefinitely, that means I can think about infinity, if that makes sense. We're going we gonna to do this thing with, with a level of parody. Does that make sense? So like, yo, don't, don't put no ceilings on what you think your beliefs are and, and don't ever think because someone's better than you now, right? That you can't be better than them later or because they got a head start on you now or they look better than you now. There's a lot of people who looking at people that say, remember when, and you may not ever hear them say it out loud, but they snicker and like, like look at now, right? Tomorrow is literally which your today's effort is multiply the amount, mu multiply it by the, the amount of effort you're willing to put in in the days. And most people ain't consistent. Most people ain't willing to be disciplined. Most people ain't willing to work a lifetime evolving and changing to be better. Make sense? But what we got online. Okay. Someone asked, can you speak more of the concept of pulling together as a collective? Yo, I just think, now I think, I know. Let's, let's just talk about like pure facts. Like, yo, things happen when as a, as a, as a black community and I'll pick on us. People say what they say and nothing kind of happens, right? Jewish community, something was, something was said, something happened, right? Senate, Congress, let's talk about laws. Black folks is getting killed. Now they're going north, right? They ain't put no law in the books on killing us yet, did they? Asian hate happened. Got laws on the books, right? Yo, say y'all name. Say y'all name. Hold them accountable to y'all name. Our name, right? When you got, when you have, when you have a collective community, you have accountability. When you have accountability, you get action, right? And you get action again when each person is intentional about being accountable for eight seconds and minutes. And when you can look at him, oh no, he's solid. Like, oh, she's solid. He's solid. He's solid. Call the room. All of them solid. They solid. And everybody who they call solid. You want to know why? Because we all define solid the same way. All the words are spelt the same. All of them are capitalized. The spacing is the same. So when you bring somebody around us, you know what it is, right? 
and the expectation is the expectation. And when you move that way, that's power, that's impact, that's how you change things. Does that make sense? Any more online? Um, yes. Someone asked, do you agree with the statement, success can take you places your character can't? That is a tricky statement. Your character can take you places success can't. Ultimately, success is short term. It's like that. It's the perception. What is success? Who success is measured by the person who's saying you're successful and what their view of success is. So if y'all think I'm successful, y'all ain't seen shit yet. That means give us a second. Y'all gonna see some others. You'll see something else. Does that make sense? So it's all in, it's all in the as a beholder. It's all about what you want and who you jock, jockeying, what you're jockeying for and how you want to be perceived. That makes sense. But again, to me, I'm cool with me, so I don't necessarily care what you think about me, for real, for real. I'm standing up for me because I want to be the best me. And I want y'all to be the best y'all so we can have impact. That's my cool. Plus, we move together, so we probably eat together, we probably have fun together, we probably vacation together. There's, we probably have some shared views and visions. We're probably aligned on some of the ways we see the world. Actually, I might not be aligned on what you want to do, but I value you so much that what you're doing, I want to do that too, because you're doing it and I want to help. And you know what? Say your name. They do too. Does that make sense? Coming right back to you. I'm sorry. It just depends on what someone's role. If if you're, the value is. That's where job description comes in and is important, right? Because it's less about job description in a startup. And we still are very much a startup environment, but we do have job descriptions for people, so don't judge. Um, it's about what the expectation of your actions are, how you understand them, and what you drive based on them. Can I see that water again? Can you catch? Catch. That was great. Throw it back. No, no, it, it was a good example. We failed, right? Because the task was to play catch, right? We didn't catch. What did we learn? What did you learn? We just witnessed work. Am I judging you? No, right? What did we learn? Did that make you a bad person? Are you not good at your job? Are you all these other things? Can you not throw a big bottle? Maybe. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So it just depends on how we're communicating what it is you need to get after and can we get after it consistently? Because you may not be a good bottle thrower, but you may be good at a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean you're any more or less valuable. Um. Right, right there, then we going online. That was, it was teed up perfectly, though. You couldn't, couldn't have thrown it no worse. <laughs> I feel like this is maybe to kind of answer the collective and the success quote question. I think that when it comes to like a collective or doing things with a group of people, it's kind of all about having similar mindsets and not necessarily similar goals. Um, like people just wanting to be the best thing possible. That's, if, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. I have friends who are not artists in any way shape or form but they just want to be the best and yes. so i can't define what success means for them they can't define success for me i can support them in their ways of reaching that said success but i have no determinant on what that success means and when it comes to doing things or growing with a group or trying to be the best with a group i think that there's a difference between dreaming and having attainable aspirations yes like you can, you can, everybody can dream. Everybody has the ability to dream. Yep. But 
when things aren't dreams anymore, that's when the hard work comes in. And that's when people stay dreamers. And that's people just continue to be the cat, you know, the customer service agent for 20 years. It's like yeah, smell of OJ's feet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sorry, OJ. When when it when it becomes an attainable aspiration, that really determines on like, do I really want this or not? Is this a goal? Do I want to run multiple retailers and do I want to have collaboration? Do I want to be a photographer that does all this, that, and the third? I think that when it becomes attainable aspiration, that's when it's hard and that's when people stop and people give up. And well, let's talk about that a little more. Cause I think I think it this conversation's easy to have. Hurdles are harder to jump. Hurdles are hurdles become harder to jump when life shows itself, right? When when other people unfairly have advantages over you, when um, things happen for others faster than they happen for you, when um, the world starts to just do what it does to you, right? Um, that's the discipline part. Remember. My only superpower is discipline. Well, not only, I got a couple, but one of my key superpowers is discipline. You got to be able to believe in you consistently when nobody else does. I'm going to say that one more time. You need to be able to believe in yourself consistently when nobody else does, including your mother, including your father. I mean, everyone when nobody believes in you you have to consistently believe in yourself and act every day and never quit on yourself every day that is success that's what i'll define as success when you are able to do the thing that you don't feel like doing or you in your mind don't believe you can do, but you will yourself to do it and be better at it every day, that's successful. Success, success is going to go do, make yourself better, and work to be better at the things you know you're not good at. Success is looking yourself in the mirror and saying like, I'm going to be better today regardless of people think about me. Success is throwing the water and missing it and spilling it and laughing it off and knowing that that doesn't define who she is. Right? Like, yo, it's going to get this life thing, man. It don't ever get easy. I'm 44 years old and I keep saying to myself, I used to say to Kev, like, oh, yeah, we do this and this and it's going to get sweet. This thing never gets sweet, man. It's about the journey and it's about enjoying. How old are you? It's about enjoying your 15, your 16, your 16 and a half all the uncertainty that comes along in it, and you believe in that you will be it. Like, yo, my son say to me, what, what they, what, what, I'm about to sound super old right now. My son be saying, I'm him. My, my dad be saying, he be saying like, yo, yo, I'm him. And I'm like, yo, you are. You him. Now, you got to do him work. You want to be him? Cool. I'm going to let you be him. I'm going to treat you like you him. Right? You're it. Excuse my language. I'm about to cuss. I ain't going to cuss. You're the guy. Earn it. Every second. It's cool. Take whatever position you need to take, but will yourself in. And if being him at throwing the water don't work, so what? That don't mean you can't be him at eight other things, right? When everybody laughed because she was throwing the water, so what, right? It's a failure in a second. Keep being him or her. That what you just said is the biggest uh, self-sabotage is the biggest illusion that humans play on herself. Can't do it. Not capable. Man, this ain't for me. I can't be him. I can't be her. Eh, you can be whoever you, that, that is like, yo, whatever you tell yourself mentally, if you tell yourself it enough times, that's what it is. Like, yo, I've watched people believe they own lie. We, we watched the whole president of the United States believe his own lie. Like, yo, 
like, like, yo, you get to what was the what was the success thing he said? Is success more than what was it? Is it success take you places your character can't? No, and, and I'll keep going back to it because every time you make a choice to believe in yourself, that's your character, and your character will make you successful. It may not be the perceived success, but did anybody think that she was successful when she caught the water? No, but they thought she was unsuccessful when she couldn't throw it back. Ain't that a, like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to life. Make sense? <laughs> um, online, what we got? Oh, we got in the corner. Say it again, I'm sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. We got what we got online. G. There's a saying. Hold on one second. There's a saying that success will take you places character can't sustain you. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? There's a there's a saying that success will take you places that 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 character can't. We just said that one. Because I'm arrogant, I'm joking. Um, it's 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 a literal. I I this is why I believe in sport, and people will think this crazy. You know something that I learned about sport. It made me certain that if I do something enough times, I'll master it. I was certain of that, like to the 100th millionth degree. So when you're around piss poor, the only thing you see is piss poor. So I needed to search for things that I knew were certainties, right? And I just started to, I started to believe that if I'd done something enough times, regardless who think I could or couldn't do it, I just believed it. Like, yo, there's nothing you can tell me about this because I just can't hear you. Does that make sense? And then having, having, having putting it to test and having micro success. My son said to me before I left the house, um, oh, I showed him his video. He's doing sport, got a highlight video, looks incredible, playing well. I said, uh, this is the I'm him kid, right? He said, I says, we'll keep getting straight A's. He said, well, what happens if I just try my hardest? I said, when you try your hardest, do you generally do very well? He looked at me. I said, I asked you a different question. I said, when you practice and intentional about practicing, do you do well? He said, yeah. So I said, why can't I get straight A's? It's that thinking. When he asked me about college, that really happened. Like I really went in and was like, yo, I'm really gonna sit here and class came in. I sat in the front of the class. I ain't sitting in the front of the class academically my whole life. I sat in front of the professor. I didn't care about what nothing, nobody behind me was saying. That professor was talking to me. The rest of them people didn't exist. So when I had a question, I didn't even have to put my hand up. I would say back to him like, yo, so you, what you saying is, right? That helped me get so confident in what I understood that you couldn't tell me because information is objectivity. And if information is objectivity, that means it's the answers. And I just need to live in action. And I need to look at every moment of my time. Jail made me infatuated with time. I look at every minute of my time. And if y'all willing to take it away, I'm going to take it back. So when I took it back, when I got it back, now I account for it. The thing I said, and I know I haven't said this out loud. If y'all could take my whole life away or take 20 years away or 10 years away, what can I do back with that same time? When I was coming up, 
I was willing to do ungodly things to get out the mud. Those things would have gave me incredible amounts of time. So if I was willing to do that and take the time, how could I not be willing to invest the time on the other side? Does that make sense? So my confidence came in that you're not going to beat me at the minute game, right? And when it's time to go into the trenches, I got him, him, her, her, him, her. I know what our team is hitting for. So when we go in crunch time, you're doomed. You're doomed. Because I know how we lock in. These conversations about, say your name. Say your name. That power makes me more confident. Does that make sense? When I could go around my team, say your name. The more people you add to this room and add to a world, and you can get that level of confidence, yo, why do you see, why do you think you see, I'm coming, Mark. Why do you think you see uh, multi-billionaires lose money and don't flinch? Because they know they're going to be back again. <laughs> Like, like, yo, the information didn't change. The way of working didn't change. The way they got there didn't change. They just had a, they just had a minor hiccup. And if they can master the psychology of a minor hiccup, it'd be a major comeback. Make sense? Um, not actually caring. <laughs> Because both, bo there's a combination of both. There has to be some level of arrogance and confidence is the perfect, uh, is the perfect recipe for progress. Because you got to be arrogant enough to believe what you're saying to yourself or somebody going to talk you out of it. When the last time you got to, sorry. When's the last time, I ain't say what I was about to say. When the last time you put yourself in a vulnerable situation where you really wanted to do something and the people around you was trying to convince you to do something else. That happens over and over and over again. And some people end up saddened out of their dreams because they can let other people convince them that the other things they're doing is more important than their dreams. It takes a certain level of confidence and arrogance to believe in yourself. That's the question that, that she just asked. Like, yo, you got to be bold enough to believe you over anything else. But you also got to be smart enough to continue to get the information and evolve so you can continue to believe yourself. Does that make sense? None of us have it all. It's about objective information that's wrapped around a meaningful plan, goal, strategy, and actionably executing it. Executing it with action, whatever those words say. Something like that. G, online? Yep. How do you personally deal with imposter syndrome? At times, I believe in myself so much and others in joining the crowd. Does it get easier to deal with more accomplishments or is it consistent? No, imposter syndrome is, is, is second to self-sabotage self because we had uh, Kayla. I just seen her in Paris. We do this thing where we get new buyers and they, they come to Paris and I think we, we work in a really shallow industry. Like, yo, I don't say it enough, but our industry is really, 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 really shallow. So it's important um, when new people step into that space, especially black women, that you make sure they know that they got the power, that it's theirs, right? And, and people, they, they have ownership of it. Because when you walk into a space, the first thing you ask yourself is, are you good enough? Do you look good enough? Do you deserve to be here? Are you, are you ready? Are you as good as they think you are, right? The only way you actually ever get through that is, yo, if you know me, anytime I get nervous, I just dig in deeper, right? Because you get to validate your purpose through your action, right? Your action not being influenced by others' actions unless others' actions are objectively 
rooted to meaningful progress that's connected to your personal goals. That was a lie. Did you get it? I'm not saying that it's not good to have others because mentorship is without mentors, you can't get there. But you got to follow a mentor to your goal, not listen to somebody that will take you off a cliff. Right? Sometimes you can get good information from a bad person. And sometimes you can get bad information from a good person. It just depends on how you're applying it to your life. Does that make sense? Gee, did that answer the question? All right. We got anything else over there? All right, we'll take a couple more in here and then we out. So there's been you know, multiple times that you've mentioned uh, the importance of your time and how intentional you are with using your time and allotting your time. Um, and there's a debate that's often you know, spoken about of which is the most important asset between time and relationships. Um, so my question now is, um, at this point in your you know, development of the Whitaker Group, but also as you look back on past years, how important has it been for you to cultivate meaningful relationships? Oh, man, we're not here. Man, listen, first and foremost, back up. What is your name again? Miles. You might need to do free game with me. Your questions is incredible, bro. Um, Miles, the time relationship thing is, I'm, I'm a combine the two. You have to spend time with great people. I said it earlier, to be better and cultivate meaningful relationships. Say your name. Miles. Say your name. Miles. My voice is going to begin to mean nothing that somebody else going to be able to say. Say your name. Miles. And say your name. It ain't got to be me saying it. It's someone in the room saying it, right? That's the spending time with good people, right? And it's, and it's I think, in, in the life journey, and I credit this one uh, to, to Kev again, because I'm, I can get stuck in my ways where I don't want to always explore new people. Because I just don't, you know, my time and, but diversity of thought, because we talk a lot about diversity and equality and equity for black folks, but diversity, having diverse people around you, diverse thinking around you, inviting new ideas, uh, talking to people that you disagree with on key subjects, right? Especially if it's people that you disagree with and respect. Those is the best conversations, right? To outwardly dis disagree with someone that you respect. You're going to learn something about them and yourself, and you're going to challenge your own views. And two intelligent people who care about each other can push their thinking forward. Best conversations, right? So for me, it's a balance. Uh, my time costs me nothing but means everything, right? And the value of it's infinite. Relationships cost me nothing but mean everything. Those two things are what this is. But I think the thing y'all got to realize about relationships, um, since we talk about it, the whole say my name thing, why that's so important is when you got relationships, when I see Miles now, he got credibility with me. Why? His questions were pointed. He asks incredible questions. He clearly done his homework on a, on a room and audience he was going to be in, right? I don't know much about Miles at all, but I do know he's prepared, right? So there's already things that I can understand about him. So when he get in the room, the rest of his actions are going to show me, right? So the best part about um, relationships is when you show up prepared and you do the work on your personal brand, relationships starts to you can you can spread relationships faster if again the power of everybody being prepared the power of showing up as a unified community with everybody defines solid the same way right because then it gets very easy for us all to just we're one big relationship right 
Thanks, man. Sit that one. All right, hold on. Let me make sure nobody else got one because I'm going to call this the last one. Oh, we got, we had, I'm going to take you last. Go ahead. Lack of confidence, sure. Um, because for sure, part of how I got how I got, we moved from housing projects to housing projects. And you know how it is, it's rough. So every every project we went to, first two projects, I just went and got beat up or jumped the first day. So when I got to the third project, I just seen them coming, I picked the fight. Does that make sense? So the confidence thing, the confidence thing was about me understanding that I'm going to either take it or give it. And my example may not have been the best because it was about being about physical altercations. But I think I learned very quickly that I need to get understand how to assert myself. Does that make sense? And if I didn't understand how to assert myself, the expectation was I could probably expect. Right. I was going to get whatever they gave me, right? So if you're willing to assert yourself in a meaningful way, you get a better odds to get what you want. If you're willing to assert yourself, and when you assert yourself, it adds value. You see how that starts to go? Does it answer your question? So the confidence in speaking, I think that's a bit of personality. I know it's personality because my daughter is a clone of me. She can just go. And my son is more like his mother and he can go, but he's a bit more reserved. So it takes him a bit. So I think some of it's, I think some of his personality as well. Um, and then naturally, I think once you're consistently yourself and you get comfortable in that mirror looking in your own eyes, you get comfortable in your own skin. And then once you're comfortable in your own skin and you live in it, it starts to go back to what she said. You, you unshake it in your confidence, in your vision for what it is you want for yourself. And then you begin to align yourself with people who want the same shared vision. Say your name. And then it happens. Okay. Right? So I'll give you all a journey that I've been on lately <clears throat> for the last two years, I think three. I've been reading autobiographies from successful entrepreneurs in industries that I'm interested in. And I heard either Charlie Munger or Warren Buffett said, or both. If you want to have a conversation with some of the most successful people and have unique and understand their mindset and experiences, there's usually an autobiography about their story. And they're telling you their whole life story and journey. And these are some of the most accomplished people that's walked earth, right? Pick up their autobiography. Um, tons, of, tons of personality. Like, I don't, I don't believe, I, I, don't, I don't agree with how Peter Thiel invests some of his money and, or where some of his political contribu contributions go, but his autobiography was pretty good, right? Um, uh, Michael Dale, I can say the same, and I'm giving examples of people who I don't, I don't love their politics, right? But they had an entrepreneurial journey that was interesting and unique enough that it was worth a listen. I listen to audiobooks. It was worth a listen. Um, the one I just finished was by Bob eager if I'm saying his last name right uh the former former uh CEO at Disney and I just finished that one yesterday and I'm going to read about the uh founders of Home Depot next and I'm and I've done Phil Knight I've done Charlie Munger I've done Steve Jobs I've done um who, who is it ah yo so I'm on this autobiography journey 
until I'm not. But and again, it's 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 really about me trying to hone in on experiences um, and just trying to learn as much as I can. I'm at a part of my life where I feel like I got to figure out how to get maximum scale and maximum impact out of the next 10 years. So I'm just reading about people who were able to get maximum impact out of their life. So just trying to figure out how to get maximum impact out of the time that I got left. And again, thank you everybody for free game. I appreciate you all.